Hey, we are going to talk now about the USS. So if you watched the previous video, we talked about uh, the PDS challenges. So we talked about how to handle files inside of the ZOS, how we can get connected through VS Code, some of the functionalities that are available there for us. So why we need another way to get connected to the mainframe? There are numerous ways to get there. So uh, the USS brought to the system, brought to the mainframe, a totally new world of possibilities. So enabling web development there. Unix was introduced to MVS in 94, uh, named it as Open Edition MVS. And later on, on 98, it has the name it changed to uh, Unix System Services. It's not a product that's running on the MVS, it's part of the system. It's a fully functional Unix uh, following POSIX standards that's running together, that's part of the ZOS. And it let us design, code, uh, test programs, so bring a lot of Unix tasks to an unstable and secure environment. Nowadays, a lot of products are making use of that, so from Kicks, databases, uh, from Java, from web servers. So wh what makes important, not just for application development, so not just for application programmers who are creating, coding, but also for the system programmers who need to maintain the system, they need to install this product, and for operators also, that, because they are there also monitoring, assessing that, so it's basically important for everyone. Now, let's get some hands-on. To get connected, I'm going to use the terminal here on the VS Code and I'm going to start an SSH connection. So you can do that from any terminal and you just need to type SSH, pass your user ID and the IP that you're going to connect. Every time we complete the connection, we get on our home directory. And in some systems that may not be available, so you have this command, the pwd print working directory, that will tell you the full path from where you were. That may be useful in some cases. First, our work directory, you can also use the tilde. So let's see on this example the ls and the tilde, and the ls are here on our home directory to see. Let's compare, they are equal. Uh, we go now to another folder, so let's use this cd, the change directory, to go to the demo. So this is how you can navigate and you can also pass some relative paths. So like here in this example where we use the double dot to go one path above. Let's return to the demo and let's list it so this is empty. So I will just clear here my screen. We can also create files using like the touch command. So here I will just create the file one. We can uh, create directories uh, all from this line command. So let me create a demo folder here inside of this. And let's go to this directory right now. There are other ways to create a file. We use a touch, but we can also, for example, it's empty. So I will just use this echo. It's just use it to print uh, a string or something. So see, uh, if I just use the echo, it prints for me. Now I'm using another resource and I'm redirecting the output to the file too. And now if I list it, it's there. And if I just use the catch, it's another command to display what is inside of the file, I get the hello world. You can use also operator, a logic operator. So like this, uh, I'll just uh, make a director and I will just execute the next command with the end operator if the one completes successful. So now I just create and delete that. That may be useful in some cases, uh, not creating the data in the directory but the the end operator so if I list here let's go back to the uh, previews and now I will touch a script.sh so I just create a file called a script and let's play a bit of script file located uh, let's take the zoo explorer and uh, navigate here to open this file the script uh, to play a bit there so here we go, the script.sh. So creating scripts in shell, that can be really simple. And that's because it's basically take the comments that you already know and just put them in a file to be executed. Uh, we have other uh, facilities for loop, condition, but it's basically that. So before we get started with the script, let me list here. I will use uh, this 
hyphen al to get more information on this list because uh, this script is not ready to be executed. If you look here on this display, there is some information. Uh, it brings uh, the authority that we have. So in this first column, there are some information, for example, if, if it's uh, a directory has the letter D, uh, if we have uh, read, write, execute, authorities, what are the uh, authorities that people from our group have over this file, uh, what are uh, the authorities that other people that it's not even on our group have and if you look here we don't have the X flag so let's add that the sh with the shimod plus X to the script.sh so this is to, to give us the possibility to execute that so now if you look if we compare the two displays we have uh, the execute for us right and also for everyone so anyone uh, could access this file this script and execute that so let's start adding the shebang so in this first line we are telling the system uh, what's the shell that we are using so here uh, I let we gonna do this hello world so see it's the same command that we did before the echo it's here and it prints the string it prints the hello world and uh, let's do something different we can uh, for example work uh, with variables and when we call a script we have this position of parameters so for example I'm using here the dollar one so this is the first parameter that I'm passing if I pass for example dollar uh, two here also uh, it will expect to receive one and two positions so like uh, my name and some name so hello Bill oh I, I forgot to say yeah so hello Bill Pereira so this is uh, one way that we can use the variables adding another uh, another line here just for us to see the, the difference that we can use then separately uh, okay now uh, let's see other ways we can declare variables here so for example uh, to declare a variable just need to type this name for this variable use the echo and pass the value so now I'm gonna use uh, the echo and the name so don't forget the dollar here and again if I just run the script uh, I don't need to pass values now and there we go uh, we can uh, remember the comments that we use it we can pass to variables comments so let's see how we do that so for example files equal files and folders better name echo and let me pass under dollar and this parenthesis the comment that I want to use so let's use the ls okay so let's display the files and folders that we have here so uh, it will take the answer from the last where the script is executed let's add some fancy words just to, to make our script more uh, more readable more uh, more beauty and we display the list so the answer from this comment it's a list uh, there are for example when we are working with these scripts uh, some functions that we can use so we can for example create loops so let's take a look how we do a loop how we interact uh, through the answer from this comment I will comment this out remove uh, and let's do the for here and I'm, I'm gonna use the for in uh, we can use a for uh, from one index to a limit so let's use this uh, interact interaction to the list that we have so the files and folders and here uh, for each item here we're gonna name that as file so this is uh, these are our files so let's do just the display here on them uh, with the deleting word before we can have conditions so for example let's check if the each answer each item inside of this list if it's director if it's not so there are some flags that we can use here on the if that will return if the specific word we are passing if that's if that's truly a director or if that has uh, some size over zero so let's do some if here so just to check that to make this if we start with the if word uh, 
uh, a block of E's here on shell, it starts with E's and close with FI, so the opposite. So let's get started displaying if this item is a director or not. So I will use here the variable and the echo to say if that is a director or not. And that, then we go here to the condition. So let's add the condition here. So we are going to use this uh, hyphen D and pass the file. Let's also uh, add an else here. So if it's not a director, we are going to print that this file is a file. So let's just use the else here and the echo so this file is a file the great name of the variable that we, have, <laughs> that we assigned it so let's continue so let's save and try it oh some attempts and we had <laughs> Uh, a typo here, so let's try again. And there we go, the demo folder is a director, all the others are file. Perfect, we can also check here, for example, if we change for S, we're gonna see uh, what is empty and what's not empty, so what has content and what is empty. So let's run again, just to see, so the file one should be empty. And there we go. So the first one has content, the file one is empty, and the other has content. So what we're gonna do now? Remember uh, the logical operators that we used also on the command line. So let's do the same here. So that could act like a if. So for example, let's remove this. And if the file, uh, if we have a file empty, let's remove that. So only if the first the first uh, evaluation is true so let's just uh, fix this adding the not because we want to delete remove just what is empty not what has content so let's run the script and the file should be deleted right now and there we go we have now just the folder and the script.sa so let's do another thing. Uh, I haven't showed that before, but we can also issue TSO comments uh, from the USS. So for example, here uh, we have just this show the list C to list the catalog information uh, from my data set, my JCL library. And what if we just use that, for example, in a script to get the catalog information? So let's see how that would look like in the command line and then add that to the script. First I'm gonna use the grab to get just the second line where we have the catalog information, right? Perfect. So now let's just cut that from the 17 character. So from where the catalog appear. And there we go, we can get the catalog. So let's do a script that just take this information. Okay, so let's start with the echo. Well, uh, one moment, let me just add the variable here, the data set name. And so this will be my data set, the same that we have used it there. So we can just adapt that for passing another variable or anything else. So it's easier if you have this information here. So let's check in the catalog for data set and let's add the variable here. Uh, we have to take the catalog information, so we're going to use that uh, that way to set the variable that we saw before, where we issue a comment. So let's just copy the comment here. Uh, let's just put it together, we can have spaces there. And let's do the echo. So the catalog for the data set is... And there we go, catalog variable. Okay, so let's run the script and see what happens. So let me just, um, okay, I think it would be easier if I just uh, clear everything here and just type again the script. And there we go. So, and this is happening. Perfect. So that works. And I think this gives to you already some uh, great knowledge to help you complete the challenge the USS 1 and USS 2 
so I wish you good luck and I think together with this and the practice and the challenges you're gonna rock the USS. So see you on the next video and don't forget comment here if you are liking or if you want to see another thing on our channel. So give me your suggestions and see ya, bye bye.